A lot of different things can make animals attack people, but one of the most convincing is that the people are moving or exploring the wilderness alone. In the wild, animals that live alone are easy for animals that are hungry to catch. Because there were no witnesses, these attacks are often reconstructed using data found after the fact. In this case though, part of the attack was caught on tape. Please click the like button and subscribe right now. This is the scary shark attack on Henry Bors. On Sunday, November 29, 1964, most people wanted to take the day off from work or do something fun. But Henry Bors and his friends were planning to go to the ocean. As the lead singer for a rock and roll band in Melbourne, he played his saxophone. It seemed like the man could do it all. No one, not even Henry's girlfriend Jill Ratcliffe, told him he couldn't or shouldn't do something when he had an idea. So Henry's plan to go to the ocean was much more interesting than just dipping his toes in the Australian beaches. On a normal Sunday, Henry planned to film seals on an old remote island off the coast of Victoria and go spearfishing in the water nearby. Together with his team, Henry got ready to go to Lady Julia Percy Island, a remote volcanic island 22 kilometers from Port Ferry that was made 7 million years ago by violent underwater eruptions. The island became separate from the rest of Australia when the landmass split apart from Antarctica. The water around the island is 30 to 50 meters deep. The sharp rocks along the shores break up the big waves. At the southwest corner of the island, there were steep cliffs, rocky coves, shore platforms, and old sea caves full of sea creatures and strange caverns. Interestingly, Lady Julia Percy holds the largest breeding colony of the Australian fur seal. The remote island is also home to seabirds that are very rare even by Australian animal standards. However, where there are fur seals, there is also the great white shark, which eats them. Henry and his friends had no idea that today would be the day that their lives would never be the same again. Henry was a member of the Victorian Aqualung Club, and so were other members of the Port Ferry Manta Skin Diving Club. They left Moyne River Wharf on a professional shark fishing boat. In those days, it wasn't unusual for filmmakers to wear black hooded wetsuits. The two groups finally got to Lady Julia Percy Island, where they planned to start filming seals and exploring the area. Henry, Dietmar Krupa, and Fred Arndt were talking about a scary story while the boat was parked a few meters off the coast of Lady Juliet Percy Island. It wasn't something that most people would talk about right before jumping into the ocean and letting the waves carry them away. The scary story was about a huge great white shark that was seen wandering around the area. It was named Big Ben. Even though most monster stories like this aren't true, it wasn't hard to believe this one at the time. There were thousands of fur seals visible as far as the eye could see. Putting a man on a boat in the middle of the ocean near a remote island makes the perfect setting for the scariest thing in the world, even if it's just in your mind. But people in the area said the huge shark was real and at least 20 feet long. They had scars to prove it. Henry, on the other hand, saw this as just another exciting chance to improve his portfolio. Henry got into the water around 12.45 p.m. and swam in the deep parts. He took a movie for about an hour and got back to the boat around 1.15. Henry went back into the water because he wasn't happy with the first film role. This time, Dietmar and Fred were with him. Both of them had shorthand spears with them. No one could have known what would happen would change them forever after this dive. The three friends were free diving when they saw a group of seals playing in the waves. After taking a picture, Henry quickly turned his attention to a bull seal among the group. The waves stopped moving when all of a sudden, the seals turned their backs on them. There was something wrong. The divers couldn't quite see what was going on though because the water wasn't very clear. They dove 10 meters deeper and they stayed close to the bottom. But they still couldn't find the seals, so they knew they had to go up. Henry's head came out when he broke through the surface. However, as soon as his head hit the water, a huge force hit him like a moving train. Henry threw his arms up in the air to tell the other divers what was going on before he could figure out what was going on. He yelled, Shark! over and over again. Suddenly, he was ripped through the water with such force that he was dragged below. It was out of his control, making him like a dog would shake an old slipper. While Henry desperately tried to reach for the monster's eyes, its big nose kept getting in the way. He could feel the sharp pain of the shark's teeth in his leg as he slid his hand across its face. Besides the pain, there was a more significant issue. Henry was sinking. 
He had been holding his breath for about 45 seconds while the attack went on. The huge thing pulled at him and rolled him from side to side, making him suffocate. Henry remembered the scary and desperate talk he had on the boat about Big Ben. The pulling and rolling stopped all of a sudden. Henry almost felt like there was a moment of peace. He swam up to the surface and gasped for air as he broke through. It wasn't there when he looked around his left leg. The shark had torn it off. Henry was completely in shock, but he was able to keep focused. Dietmar and Fred got to Henry, but the shark came back for more, so he wasn't out of the woods yet. Once the creature got a taste for Henry, it came up to him again, ready to bite the helpless videographer. Dietmar and Fred, on the other hand, fought the animal off with their small hand spears. At least five times, the shark came back, and Deutschma and Fred fought it each time. The animal kept coming at Henry so hard that the hand spears got bent in the fight. In the end, the dive boat sped toward the noise. Henry was finally brought on board when Jill grabbed the safety line. Henry got first aid right away on the boat. The other divers quickly put a band on his wound and brought him to the center. The captain called for help right away with a blood transfer. When they got to Port Ferry, an ambulance with a few liters of blood was already there. The doctor says Henry lost 3.5 liters of blood during the attack. He was taken to Warnambool Hospital. There were two main ideas that came up after what happened. First, Dietmar said that Henry was petting a dog on the beach. When he got back to the boat, the shark attacked him because of the dog's smell. There was also the idea that Henry was wearing a jacket with yellow inside. Sharks can't see colors, but experts and two Australian universities say they are very aware of things that stand out in the murky water around Lady Julia Percy Island. The yellow stripes on Henry's swimsuit would have stood out against the clear water that day, possibly drawing the attention of one of the great white sharks. But a lot of people say that getting attacked is a much bigger risk than getting lost at sea. When you need help, bright colors can help you get found. Even though Henry was circled by seals, he was still attacked very badly. He was lucky to still be alive. Henry finally got better, and after a few weeks, he was back in the water. He made a documentary called Savage Shadow in 1968 that showed some real footage of the attack as well as a reenactment. In a later interview, Henry said he didn't have a grudge against the thing. To him, they were simply acting according to their nature. It was lucky for Henry that he was with a group of very skilled and trained divers. Not everyone is that lucky. Henry also thought that losing his leg was lucky because it helped him stay alive and get away from the shark. In contrast to most great white shark attacks, which are more like test bites, this one really wanted to eat Henry alive, coming back for him five times. Not having Henry's friends around would have meant that he would have definitely met his sad end. For more crazy stories, please subscribe.